this video is a brief video on the normal distribution. And when I say normal distribution, I don't mean that there's only one, um, but there's characteristics of a normal distribution and you'll see that we can apply it to various normally distributed variables. Um, so a lot of uh, natural phenomena are normally distributed. And what I mean by that is that the majority of scores or measurements um, are around the mean or the center of the distribution. And then you have less and less as you get further into the tail. So as you get further from the mean, you get more extreme scores, you have less of them. So for example, this is an example of IQ scores. The IQ score mean, and we're talking about a population for a normal distribution. The estimated mean is 100. So this idea is that the majority of people are going to fall around this 100, some below, some above, and then you would have fewer and fewer people with these very extreme scores. Um, so this uh, normal distribution is unimodal. There's a single highest point. Um, it's bell-shaped, symmetrical. You can cut it in half and match it on the other side. The mean, median, and mode are the same. And half the values are going to fall above the mean and half below the mean. So you can have different means. Um, as with the IQ score, the mean was 100. That's going to depend on what you're measuring. And then you can also have different standard deviations for normal distributions. Again, that's going to depend on what you're measuring. The standard normal distribution, or Z distribution, is set such that the mean is zero. So here's our zero, this is our mean. Now the idea here is that we are looking at um, standard deviations from the mean. So that's what these numbers are here. We're saying that this is the mean, it's going to be zero because you are zero standard deviations from the mean. If you need a reminder on standard deviations, I would go back and rewatch a video um, on that. So here, this next step is the mean plus one standard deviation. And the way that the normal distribution um, works, we can estimate probabilities or likelihoods of, of randomly selecting someone for a score that falls between zero and one or zero and three. So here, this 34.1 represents that approximately 34.1% of the population is going to fall between the mean and one standard deviation and from the mean. And because this is symmetrical, we can do the same thing on the other side. So about 34.1% are gonna fall from zero to negative one standard deviations from the mean. So the majority of scores, again, 68% of scores are gonna fall pretty close to the mean. And then you get less and less as you go through. So these are our Z scores right here. Um, and we can superimpose different, uh, different measurements over this normal distribution. So we have a rule that we're going to use. The empirical rule, also known as the 689599 rule, is really the same thing I was just talking about, but it's combining the distance between negative one standard deviations to the mean and the mean to positive one standard deviations. So the idea here is that about 68%, approximately 68%, so it's not exact, um, well, it's all, estimate, all estimations anyway, but about 68% of scores are going to fall from negative one to positive one standard deviations from the mean. And then about 95% are going to fall from negative two standard deviations to positive two standard deviations from the mean. And then about 99% of all your responses, our scores, whatever it might be, are going to fall between negative three standard deviations and positive three standard deviations. So keep in mind that this height represents the likelihood of that score or how often that score occurs. So down here, we would expect it to be very low. We would expect to not have very many that fall in these tails. So here, for example, we have this very, very small amount of space between our or from our third standard deviations in either direction. Now, something else that's important with this empirical rule that you want to consider um, is that when we're talking about these percentages, 
uh, you will use proportions in a Z table. So that's gonna come up, but um, this would be the same as 0.68 if we were talking about proportions. So just as a note to keep in mind as we move forward. So imagine procrastination is normally distributed in the population of Fresno State undergrads. Um, and we'll say that procrastination, a high score means that you procrastinate a lot. The mean is 70 and the standard deviation in the population is seven. So again, this notation here, this mu is our population um, mean, which we typically don't know. I'm just giving it to you for the purpose of practicing this idea. Um, and then our standard deviation equals seven. So here, the way that we would take our standard normal distribution and look at how our um, variable of procrastination is distributed is we would use these uh, z-scores as a guide. So our, our mean is 70. That's this number right here. So we just take our 70 and we say, okay, that's the mean. So we're just filling in our number there. And then from there, you're just adding so you're or subtracting. So you're saying, okay, the standard deviation is seven. This line right here represents the mean plus one standard deviation. And this is the mean minus one standard deviation. So that ends up being 70 minus seven is 63. And then this is 70 plus seven, which is going to be 77. You do the same thing for two. So here you would take the mean, you would multiply your standard deviation times two, which is 14, and you would subtract that from 70 and get 56. And then over here, I would add 14 to my mean plus two standard deviations here. And then I do the same thing. So the mean minus three of these standard deviations is 49, and then plus three standard deviations is 91. Now, this just helps you to visualize the scores for your distribution. Um, so what's the probability that we will randomly select a student with a procrastination score lower than 63? So here we can see that 63 is our two, or I'm sorry, one standard deviation below the mean. And because we're looking for procrastination score lower than 63, we're looking for this shaded area right here. So the reason why normal distributions are so important for statistics is that we can make estimates using that information. So we can say it's about a 15.8% you know, um, probability that we would get a score lower than 63, which is relatively unlikely. So this idea of using um, probabilities to, to estimate um, or using this normal distribution to estimate probabilities is useful when we're trying to learn about a population. Now this video, I'm not gonna go into it in much detail, but I do wanna introduce z-scores. So z-scores, um, it's not always going to be that the variable you're looking at or that the score you're looking at rather falls exactly on positive one standard deviations or minus two standard deviations. So you might have to calculate a specific score. So when you do that, you would take um, your Z is equal to the score you're interested in. You subtract the population mean and then divide it by your standard deviation. So the next video will go into Z scores in more detail.